brotherhood doesn't exist for the sake of efficiency. Mm -hmm. Like I don't choose to be a brother to Jake because he makes my life like easier Easier. or like more effective at whatever thing I'm doing. Like oftentimes it actually kind of is like at the disservice of efficiency. Like you're saying, like I could just climb up the rock and I could hike twice as fast as you guys, but like that's just kind of, kind of cold at the same time. And then, so it's like these, these choices to be a brother it's about like the relationship with like Jake or the relationship with you. It's like, yeah, like I kind of want you to give me a hand because it's this moment where like we're looking at each other and we're, we're doing the same thing together. And it kind of pulls me out of like some the drudgery that can happen if I'm just like hiking and mm-hmm. it's just like, all right, one more rock to climb over and I'm tired or I'm hungry. And like there, it exists for the sake of relationship. Poco a poco vamos a llegar. Somos peregrinos and you know that's who we are. We make our way. Hey, hey. hey I'm Father Mark Mary. What's up, everybody? Father Innocent. Jacob Ramakers. And I'm Dave. <laughs> hey, Dave. Hey, Dave and, and Jake. Jake. Jake and Dave. What's up, Father? This is Dave's first time on the podcast. Welcome. Thank you. Glad to be here. It's, if, a, it's if, our 100th episode. We were just talking how cool you get the core, our core brothers are with us on our 100th episode. Happy yeah. 100 episodes, everybody. Congratulations. Happy not birthday. to you, Father PT and Father <laughs> Angelus, wherever you are. Thanks for nothing. Because you're not here. <laughs> That's sad. Um, like questioning their dedication these days. If you wanted to make a donation to support the podcast, spiritjuice.org forward slash poco poco, 100th anniversary. And subscribe. That was <laughs> That's good, right? one. Yeah, yeah, that was good. That was Chris, Chris you're proud of me. Chris is proud of me. <laughs> Rob, that was for you. Please subscribe. I don't. It's You have to do it, you know? Yeah. It's a little cliche, but there's a reason everybody does it. Uh, David, anything we should, David is a Benedictine grad? Yeah. Go what'd Ravens. You, what'd you study? I studied theology and I minor in philosophy yeah, and computer science. So predictable. No, I'm yeah, I know, right? <laughs> Classic. Is there like a Ravens like uh, like at UConn, they do like this thing? Some schools. Like a wave. Is there people, like a, some like people a tried to start this like claw thing where you like do this, but it didn't really catch on. <laughs> It was kind of, they were kind of ridiculed. Really? At least wrong, I did. Was it the wrong people? <laughs> no, it was just like, really? Like, you didn't go to the football game. Like, you're not actually a fan. <laughs> Is that what you do, though? <laughs> I guess. Ka, ka, ka. Is that a ka, wow. ka, ka thing? Yeah. I feel like, hey, I I feel like, like you'd it, lack dedication there. Like, ka, ka, ka. Like, I, feel, I didn't feel it. it was from your heart. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what to say. I, I kind of, in general, whoever you are, if you listen and you tried the ka 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 thing, I kind of like it. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah. It just wasn't like, I feel like they needed more passion behind like yeah, the movement. But it that's was just was, like a little bit. Yeah. That's what I was feeling as well. But maybe I was just cynical. That's totally possible. Yeah. Because <laughs> there's definitely a thing, I think, just in community, particularly probably with guys, it's like, because sometimes, like, particularly like postulants will try and like, we're going to start this new thing. Yeah, and if, and if, it's a, if it's a postulant, I'm like, all right. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. It doesn't have a lot of authority. Yeah. If, like Father Glenn wanted to start doing something, like, you know, and you got to kind of like right. earn, you got to yeah. earn your whatever that's called. You got to have authority. You got to pay your dues. Gotta authority. You got to have authority. You got to have authority. Yeah. We're Spe- talking about Speaking that. of authority, part of what Father Innocent, well, I don't think I want to go there yet. Um, <laughs> I don't want to go there yet. Real quick, what do I want to talk about? We got all the small talk out, like yeah, what 15 was- minutes before this episode. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We should get a long hair record. Yeah. <laughs> I have a whole list of small talk items to, oh, dude, to facilitate conversation. Give, give us one. I'm ready. I'm ready. But one of the things, so again, we're going through, uh, we're going through man on fire. <laughs> no, <laughs> yeah. no, no, born on fire. Born on, on fire. fire. Not born of, got it. No. <laughs> <laughs> it's not born got him. <laughs> on fire. It's not man of fire. PT was confusing everybody. It's born of fire. And if you want to get the book, it's not too late. I would love for you to get this book. Born of fire book. Dot com and and born of fire. So we're going. This is our th- third part of the third edition of the Lent series, uh, working through Lent. First of all, welcome all of you people who are walking with us and are doing this as a group. That's awesome. Um, so it's it's based off the de- the desert experience. We've talked about it. We talked about it last Lent. We've alluded to it in the last couple of episodes. But can, Father Innocent, can you just give us like a quick reminder for the audience of like. Uh, what, what the desert you just keep talking about the desert thing like what the heck does that mean why do we care yes totally so i have the great privilege of being the postulant director for our young guys in formation 
And every November, we take the guys through the desert. And um, that's how we know our core missionary brothers here. Two years ago, right, cause three years ago, we, we, we partnership with CORE to take these guys in, into, into the desert to have a formation experience where they get to spiritually and humanly just go deep. Right. We need to we need to get them out of this crazy city. <laughs> we need to help them face God and face themselves. And in the in this really holy place, this kind of happens where these guys are challenged in, in really concrete ra- ways to grow. We go 21 days, and as as the days go by, things kind of amp up where where these guys can really, really grow and be challenged and kind of have these breakthroughs, right? So what that kind of looks like interiorly, guys going on, we invite guys on an interior journey, right? So they're praying and they're looking at the, their, their selves, their weakness, their woundedness, and their desire to grow and, and to become the men that God desires them to be. But this is facilitated by what we do on the outside. And again, this is sometimes, it gets a lot of attention, right? Because there's, it's pretty intense where we go, yeah, you're going to 21 days, the diet's simple, you're sleeping in tents, um, you're going to, the, yeah, there's no, there's no comforts, Right. But we're backpacking, you know, for weeks at a time with, with 70 pounds on your back. You're canyoneering, right? You're so kind of the natural obstacle courses. You're repelling, you know, you're afraid of heights. You're constantly challenged as you, as you enter in, right? We're canoeing. We don't like to canoe, but we've canoed before and no, things like that. Just canoeing soft. <laughs> yeah. yeah this totally. is the part where it's you really basically nuts. called yeah. all nuns soft. <laughs> you just did it again. Oh, just so you know, nuns. sisters. We know a lot of you sisters and you're not soft. Uh, they don't listen to this podcast. So I'm okay with a that. A lot of sis- sisters listen to this podcast. You're not soft. I'm sorry. You're not. I take it back. And the missionaries of charity put us to shame. I know. I will say. Well, most sisters, most do. sisters do. I've rock climbed with sisters of life and they did it in their habit. I, I, I know. I'm so You okay. haven't done. I take a step back. It's more for effect. All right. A rock climbing. The effect of insulting <laughs> the brides of Christ. Nice one. Good effect. Hope it lands. Uh, um, <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> I love sisters. I'm a sisters boy. I, I love sisters. Yes, we so, all do. And we also we also rock climb, which Father Mark Mary struggles with. So really, for for him, for him, this was this was like a <laughs> thing, right? So he had to face himself and and just face his own weakness, right? So I think this is a good time. So that was dirty. So you got the interior, you have the exterior, but I do think as the more experience you have in the desert, you you just begin to understand what what an incredible gift it is. So our brothers here, you guys. You've, you've been in it, right? You guys got your nice little core jackets, you know Yeah, I, mean? I was going to say, speaking of the exterior. Yeah, I was going to say, like... Father Mark Mary. When you're on the journey and you, and you get this... Yeah, you just... You earn, you kind of earn your stripes and you, you dig deep, you have the breakthroughs, you grow. Yeah, man, you just get transformed. And one of the, one of the ways is just... You get a you core get a nice branded... Core branded chaplain jacket. Father Mar- Oh, it's weird. Wow. <laughs> I didn't get one. I didn't earn it yet. How many? It takes three trips. What was the number? Where's my third trip? Uh, that you have to complete two. Complete it's the <laughs> completion of it's your second. It's really arbitrary. The completion of your second, but you might not get it till the yeah. start of the third. Got it. So you have to do two, but there's like a discernment, right? We get together. Like you have to, to come if, back for the third to get it. Yeah. Yeah. And, commitment. And, and just, just, just like finishing yeah. doesn't isn't sufficient. You have to right. earn it. You have to like okay, we bestow this upon you. This whole mm-hmm. ceremony. It was it, yeah. It was awesome. It was a charcuterie board. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> it was awesome. I love this thing. I was so excited about it, but I I just wanted to Father Mark Mary's on on the way. You're on on the journey. Do you know where I got this sweatshirt from? <laughs> Father Angelus. This is Father Angelus's giveaway. Nice. I got I got his hand me downs. It's not good enough for him. The Under Armour thing is like not even on anymore. Yeah. It like fell off. <laughs> Whatever. So, some of us have to be poor around here. Um, Can't so, be wearing designer outfits. So Father <laughs> Father Mark Murray did ask to come back next year, guys. I don't know if you know this, but he he did ask. So he's w- well on his way to getting invested in Sick. the core chaplain. Be part of the team. And then once I get the jacket, I'm like, peace. <laughs> peace. No, I'm, peace. I'm out. <laughs> uh, anything to add about the trip that would be just important to communicate other than the fact that this we can talk about this being a unique trip as well? Yeah, I mean, I think... Uh, you know, just to kind of comment on something Father Innocent said about like the backpacking and the canyoneering and the climbing and these things is like, we do them A, because they're awesome. But B, it's like, we believe that like, when you're in that place of like, you're carrying, you know, like gear for your brothers, you have 70 pounds on your back. And like, you're in a new environment in the wilderness. It's just that like that set of circumstances is conducive to these breakthroughs, conducive to like, encounter with Christ. Um, and that's just kind of like a basis for the mission of core. Uh, but <clears throat> sorry. Yeah. I, I think that's all I got to say, actually. It's cold. 
It's cold. <laughs> it's cold. It's cold. It's Moab cold. in November mm-hmm. is yeah. very cold. And I do think like with the cold, part of it is like, because a couple of days it gets below freezing, right? Not the whole day, not every time. Like no. So there's yeah. a couple mornings with like frozen. Some mornings you wake up. Now jeans and stuff. But Frosty. it's consistently cold. It's not, yeah. It might not be like freezing, but mm-hmm. when the sun goes down, you're, it's, it's a challenge for guys. But I feel like if, we, if you woke up and you were able to like move and do whatever, like, okay, it's like, it's cold, but it's not a big deal. But it's mass and then holy hour in the cold. So you're, you're like just being still for mm-hmm. an hour and a half like that. Yeah. And then sometimes people the don't let you drink coffee. Yeah. Some, that was true. We can yeah. talk. We, we need definitely need to bring like, that up at some point. We have talked about it before. We can talk about it again later on. About yeah. being, well, probably on man. <laughs> Perseverance. <laughs> Digging deep. Yeah. Come on. Stay tuned. <laughs> Stay tuned. Yeah, come on back next week. I think, I think just to, to clarify, or not, uh, just jump on Dave's point. So we go to the desert in this context and it, it provides a place for growth to happen. And I think we just want to make the connection that that's what we hope Lent can be for everyone. Mm. Is that it's a, it's a really intense time. It's an intentional time. And the Lord wants to quicken the growth, right? So that's kind of the connection we're making between tw- our 21 days in the desert and our 40 days in the desert for Lent mm. is that we, wanna, we want to not just waste time anymore. We want, to, we want to set aside a consecrated time, an intense time to just go and be with the Lord and have these breakthroughs, right? So for our listeners, this is where we're going. And yeah, you're not, we know that this is kind of, this is an interior journey. You're not going to the Utah desert with us. But so many things are applicable to the spiritual life, to the ascetical life, to the life of brotherhood, right? And so we just want to make these these deep connections. Sweet. So what are we talking about today? We are talking about the second identity, right? So we're on an identity pilgrimage. Everything's building off each other for the most part. What I want to say, brothers, is, is last week, right? We talked about being a son, right? We are sons of the Father. Jesus takes us to that holy place of his baptism and, and the gift of, of the desert to just receive so deeply the gift of being a beloved son of the father and, and the father delights in us, right? Though maybe the one takeaway of just this posture of trust and, and dependence, right? Receiving everything mm-hmm. from a good father and fighting for that place of truth, right? We talked about a lot of stories of just, of, of, of fighting for our sonship and, and letting the father just continually take care of us and bless us, right? So we don't graduate from this place, right? This is super important that you don't, mm-hmm. this is not like a ladder or, or, or just like, okay, we're done with this step. Now we're going to go on to the next natural kind of identity, which we're going to talk about is brotherhood. Brothers, this, this is the foundation of the house, right? And so for our listeners, we, we constantly have to reinforce this foundation. And this is what I, I probably want to say is, this is what our personal prayer looks like every day. I think we go to prayer as sons, mm-hmm. right? And so this is every day we're coming into contact with our, with our, with our sonship. And, and so we, we are sons of a good father who, who loves us and cares for us. And from this place every day, we are sent out to, to take that love to others, right? So this natural kind of movement or momentum leads us to, to live the commandments fully, like love God and love your neighbor. <laughs> when, that, when the scholar of the law asked Jesus, what's the greatest commandment? He says, love God with your, your whole heart, mind, soul, and strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. Right? So Father Mark, Mary, if you could say a little bit, this is your line. I, I take lines from you all the time, but it, that our, our Christian call is not just about me and Jesus, maybe firstly, but it's not just me. Like, okay, I'm me and Jesus and that's fine, but it, but it is demanding. Yeah. And I think actually applies very well to, to Lent for us as um, I was, I was talking with one of the guys the other day and I, I meet with a couple of them on a regular basis and kind of talk about what the Lord's doing. And, and so there, there's like a word. And so they'll share kind of like the word, the Lord speaking, and then like what that means. And then, Often it's like, okay, here's what the Lord's saying in prayer. Here's what I'm doing for Lexio. And then it's like, and then here's how it, it translates in the apostolate. So here's how I experienced this with the poor. And here's what the Lord's saying here and there. And here's how it all relates. And, and what doesn't come necessarily as naturally and, and is part of what, what we're trying to kind of form in them is I'll always ask the question, okay, so in the, in the, how, does this, how does this speak into your relationship with your brothers? How does this mm-hmm. relate to them, right? Because there's still, for most of us, for most of us, there is a, a tendency for us to uh, have our spiritual life be okay. Me and Jesus, here's me and him in our prayer. And here's what he's saying. And here's what I'm doing at holy hour. Here's what I'm doing at meditation. This and that. Here's how, what I'm trying to do for him. And then it's like, okay. And then here's my mission. Here's what I'm trying to do for these people out there, whatever it is. But it's like, but what a, but what a, but an essential component that we can't overlook is what does this mean for you and those who you're in community with? Right. Um, what does this mean for you and the brothers? What does this mean for you and your family? What does this mean for you and your, 
It can be your coworkers, whoever it is that you're like really walking with. Uh, because in in my opinion, that's actually, and in some way, I don't, I don't want to say it's like, but the, it's an essential part. I, I use the example and it's, I don't want to use it again, but I'm going to use it again because I can't think of another one. It's like, right. This idea of like when you're, when you're creating it, like you're making a sword, you're, you put this, you put the steel in, in the forge, right. And it gets super hot and that's, that's prayer. And it's, you got to be bringing yourself to the Lord and that's where it gets hot. But like the hammer blows that, which actually forms it, uh, is actually going to be your community. It's mm-hmm. going to be the people you're living life with. And I, I am just so convinced that, uh, we, <laughs> we can't over speak about the importance of learning and staying in communion and staying in community. Um, basically everything is built upon this, right? Like, uh, again, we've talked about this before. Like if you're doing a ministry or something like that, the foundation is going to be relationships, right? Um, if you're, if you're a sports team, right, you're going to have a super, super team. You're the NBA for this team to keep going and winning championships. These people have to be able to stay in communion Mm. and you see a bunch of these super teams fail because the guys just can't get along. Um, staying, staying in your vocation in community and family. Like we just, it's, part of it's the communal part is an essential part of it and we struggle a lot with it and it's where like the hard stuff happens and it's just it's it's so important for us i would say to be in context where we're with people that we're not in control of yeah like it's so important for our own formation and growth to be in situations where we where we have like out external um people in particular who we just who who we can't change and we can't control and that really allows us to to wrestle with some stuff um, I think so again, so for Lent, what, what, like what this, a, a first kind of thought on Lent, right? Because there can be a temptation. Here's, here's what I'm going to, here's how I'm going to try and pray a little bit more. Here's how I'm going to maybe, uh, fast. And it, it can be, um, it could be like a solo sport. It's like Lent is a team sport. Catholicism is a team sport. Discipleship is a team sport. And so it's like, okay. What is the Lord trying to ask you to do? What is your fasting and what does your prayer have to do with communion and relationship, things like that? So that's that's some initial thoughts. Awesome. I'm just going to jump in and then just pitch it to you guys. Um, we belong to one another, Dave. That's that's coming for you. Yeah, I'm ready. <laughs> I'm so, uh, so there's this. I mean, it's a CFR sweet spot, and I tell the guys, I tell the guys this all the time, and you guys heard this as we even as you guys before you guys met me and like who's this crazy <clears throat> priest? I remember that conversation. <laughs> who's this crazy priest that we're going to the desert with and <clears throat> I said, I just remember saying to you guys that our, our fraternal life is not accessory. Like this is at the heart of what we do. And, and so we were coming to the desert together. Right. And, and I want to, we, I want to challenge the guys to live in this place of constantly being challenged to give their, give themselves to the Lord and to one another. Right. The CFR sweet spot. I think it, it's St. Francis at, at his best, like being, he, I mean, there's, there's a reason why they called St. Francis the universal brother. Right. This is this is what how he lived his life. It was radical love for God and radical love for his for his neighbor, and so this is kind of at the heart. And so the it, the desert is like a school of brotherhood. Right. Mm. Um, sons become brothers, and they, and they and we long to to give our lives for one another. But it's difficult. It's hard. Right. And I just want to say the line. It's from the book, but I think it's it's awesome just for the context of of parents. Is that I heard a, a priest tell me one time. It's a great line. He said, "The greatest thing that a mother and father can." can give their, uh, can give their only child just to have a, have another sibling, right? Because they, they their, li- their life breaks open. And now that mom and dad are, are, it's not just about me, but it's about this other living person next to me. And, and I've heard from my own siblings that there's like a real original sin thing when like the second kid comes and, and the first one like sees that like, they just want mom and dad's attention and they don't get it, right? There's something in us to kind of just to fight that. But this is, again, the desert is a place where we have to like, again, we, we have to be open to this, this, this radical love of not only just Jesus, but, but the way it brings us in relationship with one another. Yeah. Um, I had a really beautiful moment, just like in the past few days being here with you guys. I went out on a run with a couple of the postulants and we came back and one of the neighbors was outside the friary and we just stopped to chat with her. And, and she was just talking about the brothers. And she said like, these brothers, like, they, they're tired together, but they laugh together. And uh, Joseph, <laughs> he was just kind of like, oh, wow. Like, that's really profound. <laughs> uh, and I think that's, that's just so true about, like, our experience in the desert, too. Uh, like, we're, we're in these canyons. It's hot or it's cold or it's, we're tired or 
uh, we're backpacking, we're canyoning, whatever it is. And, you know, I think father, you talk a lot about it kind of week two, like week one, you come into this experience and it's kind of novel. People are just kind of like riding oh, this, this wave of like, Oh yeah. Like this, is, this awesome. is sick. And then like you wake up on week two and it's like, no, actually like I'm tired. I'm hungry. I'm kind of sleep deprived. I wish I had more of this. And, and my brothers annoy me. Yeah. And I'm like, I actually am not just like enraptured with this. And it's like, okay, so you have to choose it. Um, and it becomes like a real, I think, moment to enter into that of like, you can be tired with these men, but you can also be joyful with them. And that the two are actually kind of complementary. like this. We belong to another. It's not just this like kind of Disney fake, like, oh, like the music's playing and it's like this awesome, like it's easy to romanticize our experiences sometimes. And that's just kind of gets broken down when you get tired and you're upset or you're just kind of like butt heads with people. And so just that, that belonging to one another is actually real in that, like when I am willing to suffer with these men, I'm willing to like go through the hard stuff that the joy actually extends and is fuller too. And it kind of like takes your life experience and it expands it to be open to just a whole lot more. Yeah. Um, it just makes me think of, like David, you said we we don't want to romanticize it and and the brotherhood and our interactions. I I think like maybe from the outside looking in at the CFRs, um, you know, just for the listeners, we kind of imagine when we say that. Like my initial initial thought is, I think of a bunch of like men just walking through the desert and they're like stone faced and really serious and just like you know, always talking about their relationship with Jesus with each other. And it's not exactly what it is. Like, <laughs> like it's there's awesome. a lot of suffering together, right? And you're just in it. But honestly, like, you know, most of the time, it's not a lot of talking. It's just like silence and you're just like smiling at each other and walking with each other. And um, and then just a lot of joking, like coming out of your shell. And, and it was funny talking to some of the postulants and they were like, yeah, Father Mark Mary, like it was great that he came to the desert because I didn't really know him mm -hmm. that well beforehand. And and like, I mean, no, nothing negative on you, Father Mark Mary, but you kind of keep to yourself, you mm -hmm. know. And then like in the desert, we get to see see him joking around and and just being a kid. So Father Dark Mary, yeah, Dark, Dark, Dark Scary, Dark Mark Dark Scary, Darkness. yeah. Uh, <laughs> I love and that. and that that's actually one of the reasons that I asked Father Innocent to go back again and kind of want it to be a thing is in particular. Like, uh, like what you get to know the postulant for me, you get to know the postulants, right? And there's mm -hmm. in a way that you can't, there's not going to be another way really to do that. Uh, and so it's just like a privilege to, and, and to be with these guys who are going to be with us, you know, hopefully for, is, you know, their whole lives, right? Just to have a, a time to have that bond. Um, and in the desert, bro, I didn't have any responsibilities. <laughs> I didn't have any jobs. I didn't really have, I could, I'm but, having a great time. But that's why these guys are awesome. Cause they, I mean, I, I support these guys hundred percent, but it's nice. Even me, like I can take a different role where you guys are kind of leading us and guiding us and kind of protecting us. But mm. let me just, can I just say that it is, it was amazing. We're talking about brotherhood here and it, maybe this can just kind of give us a, a kind of an on ramp to talk about, like we have to choose it. And for, it was awesome because Father Mark Mary, he didn't have to come, but he, he chose to come for particular reasons. But when you were there, you owned it, you chose it. It's not easy. Like they said, like, after week one, you're like, man, I just like, just leave me alone. Or I wish I didn't have Father Innocent's nightly routine, right? Like for 21 days straight, you're, <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's, you're making it sound so much worse, how worse than it was. No, we're not. <laughs> we're not. You're just missing, that's, me, you think Brother Cole was going to exaggerate? No. Yeah. <laughs> you just Bro, you're, you're, are you under dominate. You're taking estimating. Like, okay, anyway. Go ahead. So, but you you start to, the, the novelty starts to wear off and you have to, you realize you have to choose it. Like I have to choose to be there. And Father Mark Mary, like your choice to serve the brothers, to be available, to talk with them, walk confessions, and just to enter into that place. And, and it bears fruit now because I know you know this, but now we're back. Your relationship just changed with them. It's different the way they relate to you, the way they're comfortable around you, the way your fatherhood kind of opens up for them. But that you chose that and, and God bore fruit. But we're all very aware that when it becomes to belonging to one another and to entering into this place of fraternal love and, and choosing to be brothers, especially when it's difficult, you don't have to choose that. You can, you can opt, well, you can't really opt out in the desert, but you can try. Mm -hmm. You can try to opt out. You can try to isolate. And, and I re recall one of the brothers a couple of years ago, and it was one of the, it was early, 
and uh, you know the demand. I think if there's a demanding part of of um, kind of of kind of processing and fraternal life in the desert, where every night we have a campfire and we process together what's what's going on, and that's going to be hard for guys. You're introverted, mm-hmm. you're tired, you just want to go to bed, but you have to sit around a campfire with 12 people and you got to share your heart, right? And that's not an option. Yeah. Like that's, we're, we're, I always say like, we're committed to this brotherhood. I'm going to share and I don't want to, and you, and we're going to do it together, right? Sometimes I hear in fraternal sharing, someone that like doesn't share and I'm like, hey bro, what's, yeah, well, I'm good. I just, I'm just not really feeling it. Yeah. We don't play that game in fraternal life. <laughs> you're not feeling it. No, like. And so it happened something in the desert where we were around our campfire. One of the guys was, was mad and you could tell he was tired. And so he kind of sat outside of the, of the group and kind of back in the dark and he didn't have his headlamp on. And I was like, yeah, this is early. I told you guys it's going to happen. Look at like, and I didn't call him out in, in, in front of everybody, but later I did. And he was, he was setting himself aside. He was back. He, he, he was reserved and kind of guarded. And, and uh, we ended up asking a funny question that night to try to get, just kind of break the ice and he didn't like it, thought it was stupid. Like this, yeah, this is for like third graders and he just didn't like it. And I was like, yeah, you know what? I don't really like it either. But this, you've said yes to this brotherhood and this is what this means, right? And, and it was a breakthrough for him. And, and the next night he, he was up with the group and he, and he took his place around in the circle. But I think there, it's just the choice of it. It's the, mm-hmm. it's, I'm choosing to love, I'm choosing the brotherhood, even when it's difficult and then desert, this is heightened. How many decisions a day do you have to say, man, okay, I choose this again when you just want to like hide and, and do your own thing. Mm-hmm. I'm going to, I'm going to knock off a couple of things real quick here. Um, going back to what David was saying from, uh, from our dear friend, Dolores, uh, they're, they're tired, but they laugh. Um, they're, they're tired together, but they laugh together. Mm-hmm. I just to, to speak into particularly married couples. I think that could be a beautiful place to be. Mm. Particularly maybe if you have some kids and you're running around and you're just like exhausted, but like if 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 husband and wife can be tired together but laugh together, like that's that's yeah, I that's like that. that's a money that's place to be. So yeah. God bless y'all who are in that spot. Uh what's the next thing? I think um we'll talk about the, I, just to confirm the power of choosing it and then one other thing. Um because they're they're to be honest, like most of what we were doing until day 19, I don't know what we're talking about day 19, until day 19. <laughs> that was a big deal. Before day 19 married. was stupid. Um, uh, you didn't, but you didn't use those words in the desert. It's weird. No. What? <laughs> they, uh, up until then, like I was in, I was like, I was, I, was in, I was in it. And it was in a lot of ways because I, I, and I told the guys before this, even we went, like I'm going to have an advantage on you because I'm, I chose this like 100%. You know, like mm-hmm. my, my choice, what, like you have it's given to you and then you have the other guys like it's given to you and then you have to choose it in it. Like I'm choosing this 100%. Mm-hmm. And, and so for me going into a lot of the stuff and the stupid stuff and when we had, when we knew, you know, 45 minutes into a hike that we were making a wrong turn that was going to make us have an eight hour <laughs> trip or whatever, like, <laughs> you know, like it just, you could just, you, and all of it, like I, because I, I had chosen it, like it, it, it actually gave me a huge amount of strength. Right. And I do think that's part of, um, it's good thing for me, even just now to be processing again, like when you choose fraternal life, when you choose the brothers, uh, because you like, you value it, you get it, you know, it's going to be hard, but you know, it's going to be good. And you know, there's value to it. It just, it makes things so much easier. It it gives us a strength and a disposition to handle the, because right. If you're, if you're ever going to be in community with other people, there's going to be good things and there's gonna be bad things. Right. And, but if you value it and you choose it, freely um and again you can choose freely even things that are that just providence makes happen right but you just have a strength and a capacity for it so like Mm -hmm. the 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 strength of choosing things freely so what is that an invitation to the listeners what like what whatever's going on in life like it can be you have to have like seemingly pointless house meetings or whatever you know you have to have all these meetings whatever like you have to this thing that thing if you can choose it like it's gonna like makes all the difference in the world now here's here's kind of why we choose it again. Is again, if you're gonna choose community, you're gonna choose with other people, you're gonna have to put up with their night routines, you're gonna put up with their snoring, you're Can gonna I just put tell up people with too their... is that you don't you don't like to like you like you have your own night routine by yourself, so you don't like to be with anybody. So like sleeping in a tent was a big thing for you. Like you don't right? Yeah, yeah, yeah it was. I think because 
you and Brother Colby are my boys. It wasn't like that big of a thing. Which I thought was great. Again, that's yeah, a brotherhood yeah. thing. Like, yeah, okay, yeah. I trust you guys. It's fine. But you have a particular night routine. You like to be by yourself. Oh, 100%. And so the, sleeping in a tent was like a big, a big deal. Yeah, I need a little mark money time. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a thing. But uh, partic- the, the morning's worse, but that's a different thing. Um, what were you we saying? Oh, yeah. So here's like, so, you, and, and I think one way I like to think about it is like, uh, we can go faster alone, uh, but you but you go further together, and I think that's true in the desert. Like especially for you guys, the guides. Like you, like there's a couple of times when something got left in the can, and you guys had to like run back, and you're like there and back, you know, boom. And when we we're moving <laughs> together, it took like two hours, right? Uh, but oh, that's rough. But that is a, there. There is, and that's something for me who likes to be do things quick and be productive and, and stuff. Like okay, I can do this faster by myself, but in general, I can go further together. And one example is. What was the canyon where we had to, uh, we, so there's some older people who we were walking against the grain. They were coming the opposite way. What canyon was that? <laughs> ding and dang. Uh, ding and dang, yeah. Ding yeah. and dang. So we're yeah. in ding and dang canyon, right? <laughs> I love this story. And, and this is one of my favorites. And uh, there, I don't know how you would, this, what kind of canyon is this for when you have water and stuff? I don't know what, what you, you just call it a canyon. Yeah, yeah it's slot, slot canyon. Slot canyon. Yeah. So we're going in a slot canyon and it's a, it's a bit of like a loop. You kind of mm-hmm. go down, then you go up. And so we're going up and there's, there's some, like an older group coming down and they all had, what did they, they all had like, they're like, they were like flip flops, Crocs or something yeah. like that. They had like little day bags, water stuff. And they were, they were, I didn't hear the exact conversation, but it was like, oh, you, yep, you guys are definitely going to get wet up there, up there. And who was it that said like, eh, we'll see. I thought that was you. I, I, was, I think everyone was kind of skeptical. They were like, like they condemned us. Oh man, you guys are gonna get wet. And, like, and yeah. one of us, one of us was like, yeah, no, we'll, yeah, we'll see about that. And like, no, you're definitely gonna get wet. You guys don't even have this, that, and the other <laughs> but, thing. Yeah, we're yeah. like totally like we're amateurs. These guys, I mean, but and and so we're and so we're we're walking up, and there's like a there's a pool of water, mm-hmm. and there's not. And it's legit. It's like you you might have to just walk through this thing. Yeah, and it's oh, pretty yeah. it's pretty like steep around it. You can't really just go around. And then without hesitation, right, Jacob just like looks at it. I don't know what happened in your brain. <laughs> and you just went like full extension. Well, there was a Feet moment on one where side, arms on the other. Us guys, like we walked up to it and we're all like kind of, oh yeah, like maybe we will get wet. Yeah. And Jake's like, no. But Jake, t- take us through. Like this thing is your, your feet on one side, hands on the other. And you fully literally extended. are fully extended hor- horizontally yeah. over the water. Like this pool and was you're like six three inches wide. from the water. Yeah. Like my nose was touching it. Like six, <laughs> well, yeah, there's like, only one way to find out if you're, if you're tall enough. And you like, just gotta do it. You if you're not it. tall enough, you're gonna get wet anyway. So, might so as well like, give it a try. Yes. Yeah. So Feet you don't on one wall. Like, is, is on the there other. vocalists? Like, you didn't say a word. Oh yeah. You didn't be like, hey, okay, guys, I'm gonna try this. He just started to do it, and everybody was amazed that wow, like the shortest guy, God bless you, <laughs> was was stemming across this this pool of water that was significant. Like, you you already got wet in, so he did it, and then we all stood around. It. I don't know who went second. But we all suddenly there was just kind of this fire that built up. Like we're going to do this. Like everybody's got to do this, right? And so we all kind of started to do it, and and it kind of started to work. And not, like no one was getting wet. Everybody was like doing it. And I don't want to take your thunder, but I think the amazing brotherhood part of this was like Omar. Did Omar go last? Yeah, he did. Oh. Yeah. So Omar's also pretty short, but not necessarily experienced in these things, and he is absolutely convinced that he cannot do it. Mm-hmm. So he kind of starts off in the stemming. And remember, he kind of put his foot in the water. He like couldn't get his. But all the brothers are like on the on the far side who've done it, and we're we're like in it with him. We're cheering him on. And, and a number of times, right? He's like, oh, "I'm just gonna get wet." Yeah. Like, no, like, yeah, they I can't do it. They won't let him yeah, quit. Yeah. yeah. And how long? How how wide it is? Is however tall he was. Yeah. Like, yeah. With his, he was his fully, fully like. Yeah. So it's more than six. It's whatever. It's <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. But there was no. There was just a consistent like, I, I'm done. I can't do it. And we're like, no, bro, bro, you can do it. And like. We're just like totally like cheering him on and and kind of just blessing him that, that this is possible for you, right? Mm-hmm. And again, the brotherhood that that happened, like if he would have been alone, you're like, I can't, I'll just get get wet. Or mm-hmm. or if you're not, if you don't have brothers that are engaged or care, if every yeah. man's kind of for himself, everybody gets through, Jake, keep going. We're all just kind of, we're just, and that got us in trouble in the past a little bit, mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. but we were all there together and Omar did it. And again, those, I have these moments consistently. Uh, the more intense we have the desert and the more we get to know what, like, what it really is. I have these moments a lot with you guys. That's why we came. Mm. Like this little moment was, a, was an icon of why we are here. This man is breaking through, particularly in brotherhood, self-confidence in his own, his own heart. But that's why we're here. That was, that's the gift of brotherhood at its best. And that, that, then that example blows up 
in life because you're like, that's a small little microcosm experience of what we're, our brotherhood is, mm-hmm. we're called to be on it in, in a daily, in a daily experience. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and that's why I think it, cause when you, like if, if, if Omar, if I was in that situation by myself, I'm getting wet or I'm turning mm-hmm. around, I'm like, this is whatever, this, like this isn't, there's not actually a way forward here, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, but it was because he could, of the example of those who had gone before, but also their encouragement, particularly like, no, you got this, you got this, you got this. And and I do think that's part of what brothers do is we, we're, we're called and we're like, oh God, what a gift it is to be surrounded by people who believe in ourselves and see some a capacity in ourselves that we don't even see in ourselves. And they mm-hmm. can be like, no, you you got this. Father Innocent, you, Brother Colby, you can climb this thing. Father Mark, Mary, you can't, but but you're good at other <laughs> stuff, but you can fight. Um, but but the, what a gift the brotherhood is to be with guys who, who, who again, who see something in, in you that, that maybe you don't believe about yourself. Mm-hmm. And how much... I wanted us all to see those old people that group one more time. <laughs> all stick, dry. It, stick it to those old I people. I wanted to stick it to them. You guys are so going to get wet. Yeah, come on. Look at this now. I don't yeah. need your Crocs. I don't need your Crocs. I know brothers. they're not listening, but I wish they were because we didn't get wet. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just, what up? I'm just going to jump, jump on jump on Jacob's uh Example for me yesterday, we talked about the story of rock climbing. Yeah. Mm. I definitely would not have done that if my brother Jacob would not, was not standing next to me saying, Father, you got this. Mm-hmm. Father, you can do this, right? He didn't necessarily do a lot, a ton of coaching. He didn't necessarily be like, hey, I mean, we talk about some things, mm-hmm. but it was your presence. And you were like, you were confident for me. I like, I, I didn't have it. And I don't like rock climbing. <laughs> That's why we're not going to do it next year. I'm just kidding. Um, I don't like it. But his presence, your confidence, your trust for me as your brother was the, the, the reason why I could do it. And I, I got down, I, then I got down. I was like, oh man, I can't believe I did that. And Jake's like, no, only did you do that? Like you did it quicker than everybody else, right? So it, it was not like it was, like it wasn't a horrible experience. I didn't like, it actually, I mean, I, yeah, I, I, it worked, mm-hmm. right? But your presence as a brother is what made that happen, right? So even that we lean on each other when I don't have confidence, my brother does. When I don't have peace, my brother does. And we kind of hold each other in that place. Mm-hmm. So let's get into um, the big story we want to talk about. Okay. Yeah. So this, this is kind of the, we have like a, a, a lot of different <laughs> stories from the desert. So in show prep, we're, we're, we're trying to find stories that fit uh, particular things. And, and I think this story particularly just highlights again, the choice of brotherhood, but also we belong to one another. It, life's not about me. And when in, in the desert, it, the Lord does not waste any time to remind us that we belong to one another and I have to choose and, and to love and to sacrifice. And so it's, it's just super sharp, right? So I think it was day two, day three, mm-hmm. something like that, where we are doing a pretty intense backpacking trip in Grand Staff Canyon, right? And so mm-hmm. there's a, a lot of different segments to the story, but for for this particular episode, we're going to just focus on that some mistakes were made. We're far off course. We're behind um, at least three hours, three or four hours during that day. Mm-hmm. And it's, it's been a long day with 70 pounds on your back and with the heat and things like that. And we, we are just getting down into this Canyon. That's going to take us to our camp um, campsite. Again, that's a, that's a significant distance away and uh, everyone's tired, right? when you're tired, you like things happen. And, and it was pretty unfortunate that we had within a short amount of time, we had two guys roll their ankles. Right. Mm. And I mean, ankle injuries are no joke. Right. Thank God they weren't broke, but like mm-hmm. ankle injury, rolling ankles is no joke, right? And so it was clear that these guys could not continue as they were, right? 70 pounds on your back. We, we had to all slow down. They had, you guys taped them up pretty, pretty good. And, and so there's this moment that, I mean, I, I prompted this because I, I knew the guys were like really tired and didn't really, they were in kind of up front and they didn't know what was happening. So I came up to them and I just told them the reality that, okay, Mark, and then Philippe a little later, but Mark um, sprained his ankle. And here's the deal, guys. He can't, he can't walk this out. So he's going to, he can't, we can't go on as is. He, we taped it up. He's going to, he's going to fight for every step here. And so I was like, guys, um, I was like, Jeremiah, get his bag and split it up. Right. And so the look on their faces was like, whoa, this is real. You have 70 pounds on your back and you're already tired and you're already sweating. You're, you could be dehydrated. And now you have one brother and then t- t- half an hour later, another brother that's a significant amount of weight that you have to distribute between your brothers, right? It was actually pretty funny that brother Colby was the first one to volunteer. Like, hey, I'll take it. I'm like, hey, Col- Cole, st- st- come by me, <laughs> step, step back here, right? Because I really wanted to provide a, a, t- a place for the nine of them to, to, to say yes to each other and be like, okay, man, like I am suffering. 
Mm -hmm. But now I have to choose to, to take, you know, 10, 20 more pounds from my brother. And so I guess I, I would just like us to reflect a little bit on what that, what that was like for what that, or what we remember it being like for the guys, but also for the guys with, for the ankles, like letting themselves be, be, be cared for by their brothers and, and kind of just the different breakthroughs that happened. If I can jump in real quick, cause I think, um, one important part of this is this, this is the, this is like the long day, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so this, they sprained their ankles, and at this point, it was—I don't know what time it was, seven or eight p.m. Yeah, and and part of it is just because we made a wrong turn, and so we had a much longer walk. Mm-hmm. So it was a long day, and uh, so guys are already tired and beat up. But one of the the components, uh, a, a part of the pa- backpacking trip, is that you carry in and carry out everything. Yeah. Right. Yeah. In- including natural productions, <laughs> or what, I don't know how that would, you know what I mean. And so there's Human like waste. Was, yeah, yeah, yeah. Ooh. What do you call the wag bag? Yep. So there's mm-hmm. there's a bag. Is that, is that an acronym? Is that like a, a a technical term, or is that just what you guys call it? It I can't. If remember. it is, I don't know. I mean, you just call them. I mean, the brand is just wag bag. Okay. So that's what we call them. We should have brought one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that would have been awesome. We didn't have one at the Friary at some point. We like it was it was floating around, but we it's know. funny. So and so part of the thing is like. You have a wag bag for a couple of days mm-hmm. and you get it, you carry it in like the brain of your pack and all that sort of stuff. And, but so at a certain point when we're dividing up everybody's stuff, one of the things that's getting divided up is their stuff. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, it, and it's, at the to, it's at the top of the bag and one guy's like mm-hmm. carrying the bag and it's like, you smell it. In he's got face. one, he's got one bag on his back and he's got one bag in front of him and he's in like, his face is, and it's, it's yeah. right in it. It's in it, you know? And and I think there is something about like uh, two parts uh, for the for the brothers. There is times in our life when we're in community, when we're in family, whatever it is, where we're going to confront other people's stuff, <laughs> and we got not only do like it, does it, we have to carry, it, but it's it's kind of nasty, you know what I mean? Um, but probably for me, at least, even harder would be the guy who has to have his stuff carried and experienced by other people right like yeah because that is the, the both of those are part of, of the communal experiences sometimes i have to carry other people's stuff and sometimes they have to i see and experience mine and and but there is like in this exchange there is this there's something that there's like a bond and there's a beauty to it um which i don't for lack of a better word is beautiful yeah really mm-hmm. beautiful so what do you guys got yeah, I think like I when I was reading through this chapter, it like totally struck me uh, that like kind of to what you were saying is so if I'm going to be a brother to everyone, like and that's I think it's pretty natural desire and man, like we see someone we love and we want to like just like do things for them, we want to support them, or like, um, but implicit in that is that at some point, if it's like a universal call, that like someone is also going to be a brother to me, mm-hmm. and that's just like can be a hard thing to accept, you know. Um, like as men, we want to do things. We want to be like responsible and resourceful and just mm-hmm. kind of like have it all. And I think in this story, like for everyone, there was a total shift. Like the moment everyone was kind of like on the same page, like, all right, like Mark rolled his ankle, like he's okay. He's good. We're, we've taped his ankle. Like he can, he can move. We're not like in crisis mode or anything. It was still just like pretty visceral for everyone because yeah. it was like and he was in pain he was yeah, in a lot of pain because it was like this changes everything like everyone was i think we were kind of falling into this like it's late you're tired it's just like all right we just got to get to camp one foot after the other like i'm not really thinking about other people i'm not really thinking about but then all of a sudden like everyone's talking to everyone like it's like all right like hey like i'm gonna help you down this rock because it's like we're bushwhacking it's kind of awkward movements you got heavy packs and like it can be easy to like you misstep and you just kind of tumble like that's what happened to mark um, he stepped on a rock that he thought was solid and it, it, it just wasn't. <clears throat> and like the person in front of him didn't say anything. And they all just realized like, whoa, like this is, this is the most important thing right now. Like mm. getting Mark and Filippo through this canyon is like my priority. And one of the guys even said like, it wasn't about like, who's the strongest. It all became about like, we're leading with our weakness. And that was what made, that's what made the brotherhood real. Yeah. It's like, we're all in it. We're all in this together. It's real. It's visceral. Like I can't walk away from this. Yeah. Bro, can you just say a little bit more in show prep? You mentioned that it's interesting when in life, when you, at that moment, we have to, we had to start leading with our weak, like weakness. Mm-hmm. So those guys were at the front. Okay. They're setting the pace. Yeah. Right. In, the, in life, when that switches, you're like, you have like the intense guy's energy. Like we want to go, we want to get there. 
and now you're the, the, your brother who is weak and poor and, and hurting is the one who's setting the pace. And so the, again, the per- perspective changes mm-hmm. and it's super humbling. Yeah. And if I can just add a small thing, like, like we choose to, to be a brother and to carry the poop, but we also like it, it, it strikes me that it's always a choice to to receive the brotherhood, even in the very small things. I just remember back to, I know Father Mark Mary is not a big, like touchy feely kind of guy. <laughs> um, but at one point it hit me that like, so we'd, we'd walk up these, these little like rock ledges and, um, and some people are super athletic, right? Like they, they don't, they don't need somebody's help. They just like jump up or they throw their backpack up. And, um, but it is a choice for me, like me personally and Father Mark Mary, who's just like, you know, he's strong, he's athletic he's or whatever. Yeah. Like you got it. Like it is a choice for me to put out my hand and like let help, help like let him help me up. Like mm-hmm. that is a choice of brotherhood. And I hate being served. Right? <laughs> <laughs> like, it sucks, You're the guide, man. You got, you got this, right? right? Yeah. yeah. But, but like that's the choice that we get to enter into. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's awesome. Two, uh, two thoughts to, to kind of actually go big picture. It's fascinating because I do think that as a society, this is this is like this is what we do a lot is when there are a group of people who slow us down, we put them in a retirement home. Yeah. Right. Or mm-hmm. we put them in here. Like there's a lot of members of our society who um, for a variety of reasons require extra time and attention. Mm-hmm. And often our way of dealing with them is to basically like remove them from the group. We're not going to mm-hmm. let these people slow us down. We got we got lives to live. We got things to do, and it's beautiful. In the in like mm-hmm. in the desert, like that's not an option, right? It's like, mm-hmm. all right, Mark and Filippo will. <laughs> yeah, so, and we 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 fought for every step. Yeah. It was so slow, mm-hmm. right? But but and I, I, we don't have to belabor it too much. But there was a point where I actually asked David that because there are a number of things where it's like, okay, like sometimes <laughs> maybe too much. Like we're trying to like like where you're like somebody's behind you and you're helping them up because mm-hmm. you have to climb up something like that and. And you guys like don't need that, right? And and mm-hmm. we see you guys like hopping around like little goats and whatnot. <laughs> and do, I th- it was you, I think. It's like like do you? Because you were behind me, and it was just the question. Like, do you like do you want me? Because everyone else is like helping each other. When I see that you're behind me, I don't like. Do you like? Do you actually like somebody Alpha in their arm? And you do you remember what you said? I don't. You were like, I, yeah, you're like, yeah, I kind of, I kind of do it. Like makes me feel part of the group or something like, do you yeah, like yeah, Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's, I think a mature place to be where it's, no, you know what? Like I'm I actually want to feel like the, yeah. my, my priority is not proving how strong I am and how self-reliant I am. Like I'm at a place of maturity where I'm, I want to, yeah, I'm, I'm happy to belong and mm-hmm. re- be received and that kind of stuff. I thought that was awesome. That was sweet. Um, can I, can I yeah. just add like, something that I've thought about and it just becomes kind of poignant in these examples and like what you're talking about with just like the bigger picture is like brotherhood doesn't exist for the sake of efficiency. Mm -hmm. Like I don't choose to be a brother to Jake because he makes my life like easier or like more effective at whatever thing I'm doing. Like oftentimes it actually kind of is like at the disservice of efficiency. Like you're saying like I could just climb up the rock and I could hike twice as fast as you guys, but like, that's just kind of kind of cold at the same time. And then, so it's like these, these choices to be a brother, it's about like the relationship with like Jake or the relationship with you. It's like, yeah, like I kind of want you to give me a hand because it's this moment where like we're looking at each other and we're, we're doing the same thing together. And it kind of pulls me out of like some the drudgery that can happen if I'm just like hiking and mm-hmm. it's just like, all right, one more rock to climb over and I'm tired or I'm hungry. And like the it exists for the sake of relationship. Awesome. It's like, that's what we're saying. Yeah, I appreciate that. And it's actually a gift you give to the other guy when you let him help you too. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I think that's mm-hmm. true. What, you got anything else here, Jacob? No, I'm good. Father? I'm gonna, I have something to end us because we're- Please do. Okay. So I, I mean, this is awesome guys. And I just want to, uh, for the, this podcast serves our brothers and sisters who are walking with us through land, mm-hmm. through the book, right? So obviously uh, we're not concretely kind of going through the book, but I do think it's really important to maybe, maybe end again, where we started with, with Jesus as kind of being the ultimate example of being a brother. Mm. And we've talked about a lot of examples of this, of this choice to lay down our lives for our brothers. Right. And in the book, we talk about the good Samaritan, right? We, we talk about Jesus who is again, the perfect example of, of, of loving when it's hard. Mm. And I think, again, that's what the desert does is loving when it's hard, loving when it's messy, 
like meeting someone on the side of the road, picking them up. Like it, it, there's, there's stuff, your stuff everywhere. Right. But it's the choice to, to again and again, to love this way. Right. And, and I think there's a, there's a deep desire we all have, because I think brothers, when in, we're in, when we're in the desert and we choose to, to love like Jesus and we choose to sacrifice like him and to love when it's hard, that's when the transformation happens. That's when there's like this, there's this, um, it, it's kind of a funny, it sounds like a funny word to use, but there's, there's this sweetness to brotherhood. Then you're like, mm-hmm. man, I f- like, this is, this is like supernatural. We're not just talking about like natural relationships. Like, oh yeah, we're a bunch of guys hanging out. But this is where Jesus enters into our lives together. And what binds us together is him. And so then then that's what, the, what like, that's the strength and that's the unity we have. And that's why you can do it in day in and day out. That's how brotherhood is sustainable. That's why every day, brother, Father Mark Mary, I just celebrated my 10 year, but we're gonna be living this life for a long time. But how do you do that? Well, it's because Jesus teaches us how to love like this, brothers. And Jesus is, we, we are sons and we, we live this way in our hearts. And then we can love pretty, in pretty heroic ways. We can carry people's stuff and we, we can carry our brothers, mm. right? And we don't, we don't count the cost and you, and you don't make excuses, right? So brothers, this is what we're inviting people to this land is to, to love like a brother or sister in a new way. Jesus is gonna teach us that. And we got to teach each other that. And I think we just want to go all in for brotherhood. We're just going to keep going all week. And I'm going to say the same thing. We're going to go all in for being a man. We're going to go all in for being a spouse, <laughs> but it builds. And I think we all desire to love this way. Sounds great. Good, good, good. Good all around. Good. So, I'll close this with prayer this time. I don't Sweet. Think I did Father, Son, Holy <laughs> Spirit. Amen. Thank you, Jesus, for your goodness. Thank you for teaching us what it means to be a brother. And thank you for... Oh, your goodness, Lord, give us uh, the grace that you chose to become our brother. Give us the, the grace to choose again and again and again, to remain brother, to stay in relationship, to be vulnerable, allow others to care for us and to freely care. Brothers, even when it's ugly and messy and not romantic, Jesus, <laughs> but by your grace, we can do it. Uh, we love you and we beg your anointing and blessing, especially upon all of those who are journeying with us this Lent. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. amen. Father, Son. Holy Spirit, amen. Thanks to everybody. And uh, we'll see you again next week. Spiritjuice.org, spiritjuice.org forward slash poco poco if you want to give. Thank you for that. Born of Fire book.com Sub- smash the subscribe button yeah. <laughs> i want to thank our core brothers for being with us dave and jake so great to have Props you here the core. i just feel like we're in it i feel like we're yeah. in the desert again like these conversations we would have and it's awesome to have you guys here yeah thank you S- special thank you to robert robert you weren't here when he did we had a, a number of episodes where we talked about charcuterie boards mm. and one of our listeners sent us a couple of like nice little charcuterie boards But also, as we just celebrated or in celebration of our 100th episode, cameraman Chris got us a nice charcuterie board, which- With like real food. It wasn't just a board. It was like a thing. Chris, you are amazing. Nice one, Chris. (laughs) He just like pulled it out of the back room. Yeah, Yeah, it was yesterday. Sweet. After a long couple episodes, digging deep. Yeah. Bro. Thanks, Rob and Vicky and Andy and everybody who's been with us for the journey. Mm. Go team. 100 episode. There it is. Follow my grandma. Thank you. Thank you. You're like the quarterback, bro. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) This all couldn't happen. This would not have happened without you. Can we have uh, like a festive meal tonight? Yeah, we can. It's Our Lady of Lord. Okay. (laughs) God bless everybody. everybody. Peace. Poco a poco vamos a llegar. Somos peregrinos and you know that's who we are. We make our way. Hey, hey. Little by little we learn a little more each day that God is love. That life is short. That all will be well And I know 